Bog turtles are a federally threatened species. So they're the smallest turtles in North America, one of the smallest turtles in the world. This was a private property that we secured permission from the landowner to access and to do some surveys on. It was the first time in 27 years that we had found a bog turtle at the site. Habitat loss probably continues to be one of the major factors in the decline of bog turtle numbers. The goal of the majority of our restoration work um, is to increase the amount of suitable habitat for bog turtle. In some cases that's trying to eliminate the density of invasive species, try to hold it back, cut it back, or slow it down. Bog turtles typically spend a large portion of their time in open canopy emergent wetlands, and that's a great area for, for basking and, and also in particular nesting. The focus that we have is trying to restore areas for bog turtles to nest in. You have bog turtles occurring in you know, Delaware, Maryland, you know, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, and Massachusetts. When you look at a distribution map of bog turtles in the Northeast, you see that you know, New Jersey kind of lies right in the center of that distribution. New Jersey was known for a pretty large amount of, of agriculture and, and dairy operations at one point. Those current and, and also historic dairy operations kept a lot of emergent herbaceous wetlands open because of the grazing pressure. So as those those industries you know died off or kind of changed, you would start to see those open canopy wetlands become more closed in. The animals are kind of our way of reintroducing that aspect of New Jersey heritage into some of these wetlands to encourage the open canopy to kind of reestablish itself. This is a uh, private farm. Uh, we work with a private landowner uh, with the uh, Partners for Fish and Wildlife Program in cooperation with our other partners with the state and another group uh, called Conserve Wildlife Foundation. We uh, partnered on uh, putting up fencing. There's four strand fencing, uh, electric, uh, and that allows us to uh, put in, in this case, these uh, four cows, which are basically doing most of the work for us and that is controlling vegetation. In this case, it's reed canary grass uh, and phragmites and some other uh, invasives that are in this wetland that make it less desirable for bog turtles. In states like New Jersey, where 80 plus, 85 percent of the land is privately owned, if we don't offer a program to let private landowners improve habitat on their property, then uh, then we're kind of missing the boat on some potential habitat improvements. Private landowners initially probably don't know that they have bog turtle on their property. It takes that initial contact through our partners to identify a landowner, find out if they're willing to allow habitat restoration to occur on their property, and then from there we can move forward with other partners to actually get the project done. The private landowners probably are, are, are the ones that are obviously most critical because without them we wouldn't have any uh, of these bog turtle projects done. We use a variety of different livestock types. We can use cows, we can use sheep, we can use goats. Each of them have their own pros and cons. Cows are nice to work with. They're big, heavy animals. If you have patches of invasive plants that have created dense root mats, they're great with their weight to kind of go in and break up those root mats and recreate a, a microtopography that otherwise would have been very hard to kind of recreate. The hopes is that they, they'll be targeting the invasives and the woody vegetation that we would have had to come in and manage by hand otherwise. When grazing restoration um, can't be accommodated at a particular site, we'll use a variety of other tools to try to keep areas open canopy and some of that is going in and clearing things by hand. We use a variety of tools, hand tools to help us do that along with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service approved herbicides. The goal of, of using that is to keep vegetation from encroaching upon some of these important areas for a longer amount of time than if we hadn't treated it with herbicide. We don't want to take all the woody vegetation out of this site because it serves a purpose in terms of its root system being used for by bog turtles. So most of the uh, cutting that is done is done on a selective basis. Bog turtle typically can serve as a nice umbrella species for these habitat types in general. A lot of bog turtles occur in limestone fens or calcareous fens. In those fens you have a lot of really interesting plants, some of which you know are, are fairly rare, whether globally or regionally or just on a state level. And so you're kind of benefiting uh, a large number of, you know, organisms, you know, biotic and abiotic. 
a lot of these bog turtle sites are not very big at all. Um, they typically range anywhere between, could be as small as an acre, acre and a half, all the way up to around probably 10 acres at the most. So um, you figure on average they're around three to four acres and with about five per year, you're looking at about 15 acres per year of restoration. There's really very few times where your, your work is ever going to be done at a particular site. Uh, and so it's, and because the sites are dynamic, you know, they, they are always changing. Um, and, you know, I, I think a lot of resource managers have a goal of, of trying to keep their best sites in, in pristine condition at the same time as encouraging, you know, other habitats uh, to remain suitable in the event that turtles ever decide to move into those areas uh, and, and also because they're, they're fairly unique habitat types onto themselves. What we've seen in terms of uh, our restoration activities being completed that we have seen an increase in, in, in nesting activities and that ultimately that's, that's the goal is that the more nesting we have then, then presumably the, more, the higher population we get. I think you know, we can get to you know, potentially something that's a recoverable species here.